Now in this problem, we're going to deal with the fourth method to calculate the amount of energy required to construct a uniformly charged sphere. So the amount of energy is equal to the sum of these tiny bits of energy, dE. And so what exactly is dE? So recall how exactly we are constructing the ball of charge right now. We're adding it layer by layer, so dE will be the amount of energy required to bring a layer, an additional layer of charge to the already existing ball of charge. So in order to figure out what exactly dE should be, let's just consider this configuration. Let's just say we have a ball of charge with a radius of r, and it has a total amount of charge of q. So what is the amount of energy required uh, for me to bring an, an additional charge, so q prime, all the way from infinity to the surface of this ball? So first thing we can notice is that because of Shell's theorem, we can actually treat this whole thing as a point charge if we're outside of the sphere. And so because of that, the potential outside of the sphere is going to be equal to this. And then once we bring a charge Q prime all the way to the surface, the amount of energy is going to be equal to this. All right, this is just by definition. You multiply the potential by a charge, you get the energy. So how we can actually use this to figure out what exactly is dE. So in our case, instead of bringing like a point charge, uh, Q prime all the way to the surface, we're actually bringing another, uh, an additional layer of charge to the sphere. So actually, uh, using this, we can compare the corresponding Q and Q prime, and we can figure out what exactly this dE should be. So Q, Q is the existing amount of charge. So let's just say we're building a sphere all the way from a radius of 0 to a radius of big R. So that's the final size of the sphere that we want. So right now we only, we've only we only built up to small r. All right. So if we're up to small r, the amount of charge that we already have, this q, is equal to 4 over 3 pi r q, that's just a, the uh, volume, times the charge density. And then Q prime. Q prime is the additional charge that we're bringing in, right? And then in our case, we're bringing in an additional layer of charge. So 4 pi r squared, that's the surface area, times dr. So we have a very thin spherical shell multiplied by the charge density. So this is the additional charge that we're bringing in. And then we're going to bring it all the way to the surface, so we just divide it by r. So that's the distance. So we can actually just integrate this with respect to r all the way from 0 to big R. So let's just try to simplify this a bit. So we have a 4 pi rho squared, 4 pi, so just remember rho is the charge density. We have epsilon, let's also have a 3 here. And then we have 5 r's, so 4 r's, so r to the power of 4. So now we can integrate this. So e is equal to this which is equal to this. So 4 pi rho squared, 3 epsilon r to the power 4 dr. So this is easy, easily done. So r to the power 5 divided by 5. And I want to get rid of rho. And I want to express my answer in terms of the total amount of charge. So we can use this formula. So rho is actually equal to 3 q divided by 4 pi r to the power of 3. Don't forget, there's a square. So actually, uh, not like that. No. 9q squared, 16 pi squared, r to the power of 6. So uh, the 4 pi, they cancel out. We're left with 4 pi, r to the power of 5. We're left with 1r. The 3, they cancel out. So I think you see where this is going. So we have a 3 and a 5. 3 over 5. And then we have a 4 pi epsilon. 4 pi epsilon, and then we also have a q squared divided by r. And then once again, for the fourth time, we've arrived at the same answer using a completely different method.